Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very good morning, everyone. Great you could be with us for hour number two of the show today. Hello, hello, hello. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are coming to you live right now from California's Central Coast, 906 the time. This is where California comes to talk about the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends, news and information that affects your physical and mental health, and how you spend your leisure time. Straight ahead here on this hour of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program, we are giving away tickets to the annual Harvest Festival at the San Jose Convention Center. Stay tuned for how to win. That is coming up soon. Uh, Also ahead on the program, we welcome Washington Post travel writer Andrea Sachs back to the program for an interesting look at how the TSA, you know, the organization behind airport security screeners, is trying to implement some ways to speed up the whole process. Also, we speak with a top dog at the USDA regarding the farm to school program and several schools that are getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money to connect children with the foods they eat. Love that program. And today we round out the Sunday Funday Hour with cultural food tours in San Francisco's Mission District, Japantown, a Los Angeles Latin Spice experience, and a foodie stroll through Old Pasadena. All those stories straight ahead right here on Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. But right now, it is time to get the latest food, beverage, and travel news from the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk on this Sunday morning. Scientists say they are hoping to recreate wine made thousands of years ago by studying the residue of ingredients found inside clay vessels discovered recently in Israel. It was announced this past week that a giant wine cellar was located by archaeologists and is likely the oldest and largest of its kind, holding the equivalent of 3,000 modern-day bottles of wine. That's a nice cellar. The finding predates uh, the Bible, also the Dead Sea Scrolls, at roughly 1700 B.C. The team says the cellar was destroyed in some violent event, possibly an earthquake. Another intriguing aspect of this discovery is a pair of doors leading to another large room. Scientists say they plan to explore what's in that room, but not until sometime in 2015 when the next dig is planned. You're running out of time to thaw th- uh, <laughs> thaw your frozen turkey if you haven't placed it in the refrigerator quite yet. According to Butterball, you know, there is a shortage of fresh birds. You should give yourself a full 24 hours of defrosting time for every four pounds of frozen turkey. So a 16-pound bird placed in the refrigerator right now should be defrosted by Thanksgiving morning, but that doesn't give you any time to brine overnight, of course. Roughly 80% of the birds sold this time of year are of the frozen variety, and that's most of you. The fresh bird shortage is limited to those larger than 15 pounds, which constitutes only a small fraction of the Thanksgiving consumer market. A Butterball's press release stated the company's birds did not gain as much weight as expected, which has uh, many food journalists pondering why. Butterball has yet to comment on any of the theories being tossed about. A request to shut down a Southern California plant that makes the popular sriracha hot sauce is on hold following a judge's ruling on Friday. The city of Irwindale wants to halt production of Weifong Foods facility following complaints by a number of local residents who say fumes from the plant are causing health problems. The judge is waiting for a report from the South Coast Air Quality Management District on the nature of the smell. This according to the LA Times. The city has received... At least 18 complaints from residents, with some saying the plant's exhaust is like getting hit with pepper spray. The judge did not set a future date for the showdown, but the case is expected to resume in the coming weeks. Sugary drinks may increase a woman's chance of developing endometrial cancer. This according to a recent published study funded by the National Cancer Institute. Researchers say postmenopausal women in their study who drank the most sugary sodas had a 78% higher risk for this most common form of the disease. 
Data was used from more than 23,000 women who report dietary intake as well as other information. San Francisco and San Jose are among the happiest places to live in the United States. This at least when considering large metro areas. The annual report by Gallup ranks the San Francisco-Oakland-Fremont area as number two, and the Silicon Valley cities of San Jose, Sunnyvale, and Santa Clara in the number three slot. Factors considered included residents' physical and emotional health, work environment, and life evaluation. Top on the list is the Washington, D.C. area. Denver came in at number four, followed by Minneapolis at number five. San Luis Obispo, where I'm sitting right now, also made the cut when including smaller metro areas, ranking number 10 for overall well-being. I love it. Well, here's the deal. Climate and scenic surroundings are not part of the equation. So I think all the California locations would bump up a bit if that were the case. Humboldt County's Lost Coast Brewery is set to quadruple its annual output of craft beer varieties next year, including the company's well-known Downtown Brown, Great White, and Tangerine brands. Lost Coast is building a 600,000-barrel brewery complete with visitor center and tasting room, not far from its current production facility there in Eureka. The North Coast favorite is part of a greater trend among California craft breweries who are expanding their operations to supply a public thirsty for our state's top-rated beers. Other Golden State breweries that have recently boosted capacity on a large scale or are in the process of making that happen include Chico's Sierra Nevada, Petaluma's Lagunitas, San Diego's Stone, and Paso Robles Firestone Walker, a Both Sierra Nevada and Lagunitas expanded by moving out of state. Uh, Stone and Firestone, also, of course, uh, Lost Coast, all remaining here entirely within California. We're giving away several sets of tickets right now, including at least one family four-pack to next weekend's Harvest Festival at the San Jose Convention Center. This is a great place to go on uh, Black Friday or Saturday. What is it? A small business Saturday or Sunday as well uh, to find very unique handcrafted items made by your neighbors in many cases. There are people that come from out of state to attend this, uh, artisans that come quite a distance, as a matter of fact, to attend this. But so many of the people displaying their goods are from right here. And it's we're talking food or any of the crafts uh, available. Terrific place to get your Christmas shopping done or a big chunk of your Christmas shopping. So uh, we're making it super simple, very easy to enter. Uh, just friend us on Facebook. So if you're online right now, head to Facebook or Twitter and mention us in a post saying you want to go. Username for both of those, Eat drink, explore. All one word. You can email me personally if you would like, randall, R-A-N-D-O-L, at eatdrinkexplore.com, or give us a call right now, 805-439-3505. I'll do my best to uh, choose one from each of the different venues, Facebook, Twitter, email, and uh, phone calls. So uh, good luck. (laughs) It's National Sardines Day, by the way, and we are winding down National Peanut Butter Lovers Month. I'm your host, Randall White. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network back in just a moment with travel deals. The 2013 Harvest Festival Original Art and Craft Show is coming soon. From handmade earrings to hand-pressed olive oil, you'll find it at the 2013 Harvest Festival. With over 24,000 handmade American crafts, delicious food, and live entertainment, it's fun for the whole family. The original and the best. The Harvest Festival Art and Craft Show. Friday through Sunday, November 29th through December 1st at the San Jose Convention Center. In most parts of the country, autumn means falling leaves and cool or even cold days. But in Palm Springs, it's the kickoff for the area's fun season with warm, sunny days and exciting, vibrant nights. Right at the center of everything is the newly renovated All Sweet 
Hyatt Palm Springs, a classic resort property that sits at the base of the San Jacinto Mountains. The resort features in-room spa services, a poolside bar, cabanas, and the Cher Small Plate Bistro and Wine Lounge. Also, just steps away, world-class shopping, some of the state's best dining options, and for a limited time, the famous Forever Maryland statue. Make your next destination Palm Springs, and while you're there, make your home the all Sweet Hyatt. Get the best rates online at HyattPalmSprings.com. That's Hyatt, H-Y-A-T-T, PalmSprings.com. The 2013 Harvest Festival Original Art and Craft Show is coming soon. From handmade earrings to hand-pressed olive oil, you'll find it at the 2013 Harvest Festival. With over 24,000 handmade American crafts, delicious food, and live entertainment, it's fun for the whole family. The original and the best. The Harvest Festival Art and Craft Show, Friday through Sunday, November 29th through December 1st at the San Jose Convention Center. You waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to the program on this Sunday, fun day morning. I am your host, Randall White, and we are coming to you, as always, from California's fantastic Central Coast. Uh, Travel deals, we stretch the word a little bit. What we're trying to do this week is give you... Uh, the information you need to get through airport security as quickly and as easily as possible. And time is money, right? So it is a deal if you save time. That's how I'm looking at it. Talented and gifted travel writer for the Washington Post, Andrea Sachs, has a recent article on navigating the TSA. Perfect timing for this coming Thanksgiving weekend when record numbers of people are passing through the nation's airport screening zones. And Andrea joins us right now on the Eat, Drink, Explore live line. Hello, Andrea. Hello. Nice to be back. How are you, my dear? Good. You make me sound like a dancing pony. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, anything I can do, you know. Uh, We should note, by the way, that uh, we pre-recorded this segment because you are currently, at least as this show is broadcasting the week before Thanksgiving, uh, in Sochi. uh, You're doing a preview of Russia's 2014 Olympic Games? I am. I am. Yeah, I'm going, uh, well, I'm going to mess up all the time zones, but I'm going tomorrow, which has already been. So (laughs) (laughs) I am going, and I'm going to sort of check out the situation for people who either are interested in doing other things than go to just the Olympic events, because there'll be some downtime. And so I'm going to check out other 
attractions such as, I believe, Stalin Summer Residence is there. Oh, cool. And there's a monkey sanctuary that they send to Mars or something. I think mm. crazy like that. I might skip that. Yeah. I can imagine you might skip that. <laughs> yeah, that makes me either want to go with them or feel sad for them. And that's exactly. Not why I'm there. But, I wish you know, there's some interesting sites. I look forward to hearing about it, which we'll do next month. And I wish you the best of luck. You know, I'm not a big fan of next year's games based on the host countries. Mm-hmm draconian, no. anti-gay, anti-free speech, anti-eat, drink, explore host Randall White rules. But <laughs> that okay, said, yeah. <laughs> I am envious that you get to go because the travel bug in me sees the incredible experience it'll be and overlooks the uh, intense anti-feelings I have toward the rulers of Russia. So, <laughs> right. And I feel, you know, I feel like sometimes we good people with open minds should invade yeah, places right. with closed minds and sort of introduce these ideas. Hey, I and like I it. Most likely we'll be doing next month's interview in Siberia in between my chopping pebbles into dust and whatever else forced labor they might make me do. But no, I, I do feel like it's important. And I, and I spoke with someone who is the Moscow correspondent and I said, is there anything I shouldn't talk about? And she said, no. Oh, They're good. Very open to talking about everything. Sweet. Ooh, I'm I'm happy so, to hear that. So to get yes, to I'm all these, your ambassador. Good to get to all these remote places, Andrea. You have to go through TSA. Um, oh yeah. Several several times. What did you discover in your work, your investigation into navigating TSA as easily as possible? Well, what we did, Becky, who's also another reporter here at the Post, and we spent the day at Washington, Dulles in Virginia, Mm -hmm. and we mainly focused on PreCheck, which is, they introduced it in October 2011, and it's one of the trusted traveler programs. So if you basically throw out all your information to TSA or to the airline and they feel confident that you are not a threat or you're low risk, then they'll allow you to go through the special lane and you can keep your shoes on, which is such a novelty. Nice, yes. And keep your laptop in the bag and keep your liquids in the bag and keep your belt buckle on so your pants stay on. <laughs> that happens often to me. My pants fall off. And Well, then uh, you're just looking hip. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Having your hand, your pants halfway down, you know. I know. <laughs> and I don't think when they're my ankles. It's right. not supposed to go. <laughs> nice right. trip. You but know, the whole I'll just... Yeah. I was just going to say, the whole just being able to keep your shoes on, to me, that's the biggest one of all, because uh, I don't like taking off my shoes and then having to walk with my socks in the same zone that all these hundreds and hundreds of people before me have just walked in their socks. You know, that grosses me out. Yeah. And you do the hop, you know, when you try and put your boot on, you hop. Yeah, and, right. You do that, too. It's like yeah. when you're in the grocery checkout line, you know, you, you wait in this long line for grocery checkout. And then as soon as you're done paying, you don't have everything bagged yet, and they're already working on the next person. And so I, I feel rushed and like, oh, my gosh, I'm holding everybody up. That's how I feel every time I get through TSA. It's like I wait and I wait and I put all this stuff through. Then all of a sudden I'm through. And it's like all of a sudden they sped up their operations. It's like the, <laughs> the bags are coming through one after another. So I know. Uh, how often like do you? That, oh, it's like the I I Love Lucy episode. Yes, you know, with the, the chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm, that's you, that's Andrea. How often do you need to fly for this version of TSA to make sense? Well, you know, TSA works by being mysterious, and they like the the randomness of it. So you can actually sign up for it through Global Entry or some of these other trusted traveler programs. Mm -hmm. So Global Entry is the one. It costs $100, and it allows you to go when you're traveling, when you're returning from a trip abroad, you can skip Immigration and Customs and just use their their kiosk and scan your passport. And so because you're Global Entry, you just immediately become a pre-check member. Right. So you can do it that way. You do have to go to the airport. You do have to do an interview and fingerprinting, but then that's it, and you're good for five years. And it's a hundred bucks. It's a hundred dollars. The airline can also, and I don't know the, I, I don't know the particulars about that, but I think if you're a very frank, frequent flyer, you're mm-hmm. in the program, they can opt you in. Uh-huh. And we were at the airport. So many people were just sort of opted in without them knowing, and they were really happy about it. So. If you ever see like a little thing from your airline that says, do you want to be part of pre-check, you say yes. And that doesn't cost you anything. That's good but to know. The, yeah. Yeah. And then the TSA is also, they said by the end of the year, they're going to allow you to just directly apply for the program and it will be $85. Mm-hmm. And you can apply online and then you just have to go to one of the enrollment centers and just do the fingerprinting and 
that could be a hassle for you guys because I think they're only going to be right now in Dallas and Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. So, so that's not very convenient. But also the military, active military, is immediately part of the program. And finally, TSA might just pick you. But they might just, and they, and so many people were just picked because TSA just sort of put it on their boarding pass and said, you've been approved. Wow. And they <laughs> That's want nice. 25, yeah, they're trying to get 25% of travelers to be just randomly selected or be in this program. Well, that would really speed things up to remove well, one we, quarter. Yeah, we met, we met people that four or five times in a row, they were selected and they don't know what happened, but they just, they embraced it. So it, it can happen. I'm waiting for it to happen to me. Did, did you <laughs> well the, the amount that you wonder. travel you would think that it would i know but maybe because i'm going to certain places i don't know <laughs> maybe yeah. it's flagged as a spy i don't know i was kind of wondering what the red flags might be especially the the carry-on items clearly if you have like a knife or you know in my case i always get i always get caught with a bottle opener <laughs> a wine bottle <laughs> opener <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, I haven't. I'm losing another one. I, I should <laughs> buy stock and wine bottle openers. But uh, are there certain things that you just really just common sense think before you get in that line? Uh, what do I need to remove? Yeah, and it's not even that. It's really behind the scenes. So it's really TSA. They said to uh, the spokesperson said, the more information you give us, the the more we can trust you. So. If you're giving them information about, you know, your birth date, you know how every time you have to fill that in, your birth date, mm-hmm. your gender, and just if you have a pattern that makes sense and isn't jarring. Yeah. It's just they're looking at all that, which is creepy in a way for people who think that they're too intrusive in our personal lives. Right. But the benefit is because they are looking at our patterns that they know that we're, you know, just going to often to listen to music and just going up to Massachusetts to have turkey with my mom. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not threatening whatsoever. Right. So it's really not so much that you get caught with a weapon or anything in your bag, so that is alarming. Um, it's really behind-the-scenes stuff, like how much personal information you're providing them. I'm happy to give them just everything because I don't want to go through those yeah. lines. I really don't care. I don't have anything to hide. I don't think they're going to be using it against me. I don't have this big brother sort of mentality. So, uh, well, interesting stuff. We'll provide a link to your piece there at the Washington Post online at eatdrinkexplore.com. I cannot wait to hear about Sochi when you get back, Andrea. Thank you. And then you'll have to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andrea Sachs, travel writer for the Washington Post, joins us every month here on the Eat Drink Explore Radio Network. Thanks again, Andrea. Have safe travels. Thank you. Talk to you next month. All right, everybody. Randall White here at Sidecar Restaurant in downtown San Luis Obispo, where the month of November takes on a whole new theme. General Manager, owner Josh Christensen, why are the next few weeks so important? Well, Randall, we're really excited to be participating in Movember. I'm sure some people are familiar with the idea of the no-shave November, growing out your mustache to raise awareness for men's health issues. We here at Sidecar are going to do that with a little twist as well. And the twist is a mohawk? That is correct. We figured we'd go mo Movember. So mustaches, mohawks for the guys. Even some of our Mo sisters here at the restaurant are going to be rocking a mohawk for the month of November. And it's all to raise awareness for men's health issues and try to raise some money for cancer research. Sidecar Restaurant, downtown San Luis Obispo, online, sidecarslo.com. Josh Christensen, general manager, owner at Sidecar Restaurant. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Randall. We'll see you at the restaurant. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. Other groundbreaking ideas from that time, the whalebone corset, the pedal-operated submarine, and the two-story outhouse. We've come a long way since then. It's time our light bulbs did the same. Visit energysavers.gov and learn about energy-saving light bulbs. See, these new bulbs are more efficient than the old ones, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. They last longer, too, like how we humans last longer now that doctors use antibiotics instead of leeches. And they cut down on our energy costs, because in our own groundbreaking age of aeroplanes and moving pictures, 
We deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. can join us here each and every Sunday morning, 9.33 the time, as we discuss all things food, beverages, and travel each and every week from 8 to 10 right here on this very station. And this portion of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio brought to you by the Harvest Festival Original Art and Craft Show at the San Jose Convention Center November 29th through December 1st, so that's next weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, including Black Friday and uh, Small Business Saturday. So it's perfect, really. Get your shopping done for those special people in your life and, you know, get things that are made by local artisans and really unique. You won't you won't be at the, you know, at Christmas, everyone's opening their gifts and, you know, there's a lot of the same gifts being opened. Yours will be unique and uh, locally made. Also, a reminder, we are giving away several sets of tickets, including at least one family four-pack to this Harvest Festival. Uh, Great place uh, to get those gifts, as I mentioned. Uh, Now, really easy to enter. Just friend us on Facebook or Twitter and mention us then in a post saying you want to go. Username, eat. Drink Explore for both Twitter and Facebook, all one word. Or you can email me personally, Randall, R A N D O L, at eatdrinkexplore.com. Or you can give us a call right now. We will answer the phones for the next five minutes or so, 805 439 3505. Again, 805 area code 439 3505. Giving away tickets to the San Jose Harvest Festival. Now to our guest segment. You know how passionate we are at Eat, Drink, Explore Media when it comes to fresh and local produce and gaining access to these foods for school children. Well, a program by the USDA is handing out hundreds of thousands of dollars here in California to support several schools that have innovative farm-to-school programs in place. And joining us on the Eat, Drink, Explore live line right now to uh, explain how that works exactly is Kevin Concannon. He's the undersecretary uh, for the USDA's Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Services. Great to have you on the program, Kevin. I'm thrilled to be here, Randall. I, You know, when I read this uh, news release earlier in the week, uh, earlier this past week, I just thought, well, that's fantastic. I didn't even know the USDA encouraged these sorts of things. Well, you know, we have for the past four years now In particular, we've been encouraging what we call broadly farm-to-school, which really has as its basic elements promoting more school gardens, Mm -hmm. promoting more local purchasing, and really putting an emphasis on educating students in the school 
to where food comes from and in the process encouraging those students to eat healthier. You know, in California each day, 3 million students alone participate in the National School Lunch Program. And, of course, California is, uh, if not the most diverse uh, agricultural economy in the country, and you can grow around year-round out there. And yet, even in states like California, with all that abundance, you'd be surprised how many students really think uh, food is coming from the supermarket chain instead of instead of connecting it back to somebody has to grow it. And with this uh, farm to school initiative, again now in its fourth year. Uh, has really been uh, uh, developing even more and more momentum each year as a way of both connecting students to local foods, especially fruits and vegetables, which is the part of the American diet that people of all ages do least well at. That is, we most of us don't consume enough fruits and vegetables. We'd be better off health-wise if we did. And to the extent that schools help connect kids back to that, we have our motivation underlying all of that is twofold. It's one, to get those kids to eat those locally grown foods. I've been down in, uh, I recall being in the in the Riverside School District mm-hmm. last year, and mm-hmm. this year I was in the Oakland School District. Both cases, the schools had pretty significant school gardens, and they were cycling various classes out over the course of the year to work on the on the gardens as a way of really educating them. And when I was at that uh, Riverside school, this these were second or third graders came out. They told me more about the benefits and the health benefits of strawberries than you know some <laughs> of the PhDs we have hanging around the uh, the ag department here. <laughs> Isn't that so great? They, they were very impressive. They really were, and they were very proud of the fact that they you know were tending those plants. Yeah. So we're it's very exciting for us and. As you mentioned, a number of school districts in California were uh, successful in getting these grants. And we see the grants as more uh, catalysts, really, to further the effort because uh, schools, other schools hear about this from their peers who are in the either teachers or in the school nutrition side, and it prompts them to say, well, we could do that in our school as well. We could have raised bed gardens or we could have, you know, a half acre set aside that is not so much for industrial purposes to feed the school as much as it is to connect kids back. The school I was at in uh, in Oakland uh, a couple of months ago, they were so thrilled there that they were they were talking to me about vermiculture, how they are. Is that the worms? Uh, yeah, worms mm-hmm. and all the things they were doing uh, with worms. And the kids brought me <laughs> over to this uh, this uh, compost been where, again, they had, you know, millions, I suppose, of worms, but uh, they were talking about worm castings and how they uh, placed them back in in the soil and the difference that it makes. Well, to me, that was music to my ears because, one, they were connecting kids. This is in Oakland, you know, an urban part of the country and part of the state. One of the schools that is a recipient of this money. Yes, that's right. One of the. I'm not sure if it's that same school I was at, but there is a school in Oakland in the Unified District that uh, that has won a grant as well. Yeah, Oakland, uh, the Unified School District there got uh, for implementation of a new plan. I imagine a uh, hundred thousand dollars. It ties with the Pittsburgh Unified School District uh, for the most amount received for another implementation program for a hundred thousand. I'll just quickly Wonderful. go down the list here. Uh, Modesto City Schools and implement- right. implementation grant for 90 uh, more than 90,000 and you know speaking of Modesto they're there in the Central Valley which is uh, really the hotbed of agriculture in the state and uh, I we just had a gentleman on the program uh, last hour who has started up this mobile farmers market to get fresh Bruce produce, rather, uh, to some of the rural areas in Merced County. And I was talking to him about the irony of the fact that people that live in this uh, really agriculture-rich region are not eating the fresh produce that's grown directly around them. Yeah. No, that, that's uh, it is. It is an irony, and we run into that, you know, in places like Florida and, and uh, California and up in Michigan, where they have a very diverse uh of you know farming economy as well that mm-hmm. it's strange people are as I said earlier we we get too disconnected from uh, 
where food comes from. Yeah. Pasadena Unified School District gets a planning a planning grant for forty four more than forty four thousand dollars. And then uh, finally the Sweetwater Union High School District in Chula Vista down in the southern portion of the state, also uh, nearly forty five thousand dollars also for planning. How did the department go about choosing which schools would receive these grants? Well we had about three hundred and fifty uh, or so applicants this round and uh this is the the second year that we've done this and they look for schools one that were a, a combination of some were planning and and uh to help them get really launched others were in a little further along let's say in developing their infrastructure for example some schools depending on the the geographic areas in the country were putting up hoop houses which are ways of extending the growing season mm-hmm. in colder climates. So they they looked for both the leadership factors, you know, who's really promoting this in the school, and then what's the likelihood that they're going to be able to carry it out uh-huh. uh, successfully. And then they tried to uh, spread them around the country, so to speak. We hear about cuts left and right when it comes to uh, programs like this. I'm glad to see that this one has survived. Yep, this is happily, this is part of the the authorization for this program came from the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, which was uh, uh, bipartisan passed, uh, one of the last, unfortunately, major pieces of domestic legislation, but it's very focused on school meals, on uh, programs like this, uh, uh, farm to school, on nutrition education, helping people to better understand what they need to do to keep themselves healthy by healthy eating, and uh, also uh, focused on summer eating, the time of year in the U.S., unfortunately, when uh, an American child is much more likely to go hungry, principally because school is out, and uh, in low-income households, that can be a real challenge for those kids. There's no greater incentive to get these plans going than the financial version, <laughs> which uh, which you're doing by by issuing these grants. We've had some celebrity name uh, power here in the state in Southern California. Jamie Oliver, uh, oh yeah, pushing for this sort of you know these sorts of uh, projects in the northern half of the state. Alice Waters uh, in the Bay Area, famous for her Chez Panisse restaurant in Berkeley. Uh, I know that she has a lot of plans like this going on as well. But to see it coming in at the federal level, I just uh, found that to be significant, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show to talk a little bit more about it. Any plans to expand that. it? I appreciate that. You know, mm-hmm. we're fifty six percent of the schools in California now have some version of a farm to school program. With in the, we just did a survey of uh, 60,000 schools selected across the country, and we had a very high response rate. Almost 80% responded to it. And uh, California is well ahead of the curve, no surprise. Mm-hmm. But 56% have a program. Another 14% have indicated they're planning to start. And they spend right now about 18% of school food budgets in the state go out into local purchases. So, uh, and no surprise that yeah. some of those local uh, top products purchased in California, citrus, apples, lettuce, berries, probably. berries <laughs> carrots. Kevin, so. I got to stop you there. Kevin Concannon, Undersecretary for the USDA's Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Services. Thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck with the program. Well, thank you, Randall. Great to be here. All right, everyone, stick around. You're listening. <laughs> Citrus, apples, lettuce, berries, probably. Berry, <laughs> carrots. Kevin, I so. gotta stop you there. Kevin Concan, an undersecretary for the USDA's Food, Nutrition, Welcome and Consumer Services. Thank you, you so much explore. for joining us. Best of luck with the program. Well, thank you, Randall. Great to be here. All right, everyone, stick around. You're listening. The 2013 Harvest Festival Original Art and Craft Show is coming soon. From handmade earrings to hand pressed olive oil, you'll find it at the 2013 Harvest Festival. With over 24,000 handmade American crafts, delicious food, and live entertainment, it's fun for the whole family. The original and the best. The Harvest Festival Art and Craft Show, Friday through Sunday, November 29th through December 1st at the San Jose Convention Center. 
with Everly Winery. Whether you're looking to host a private event or special occasion like a wedding or a birthday, the staff at Everly will make sure you have great wine, good times, and memories to last a lifetime. Everly Winery is open daily, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with complimentary wine tasting so you can find the perfect wine to pair with your holiday gatherings. Bring in a new unwrapped toy and receive 20% off all wine purchases. Also, at Everly, complimentary tours of the production facility and the world-famous Everly Caves are held throughout the day. VIP tours and tastings are available for a unique and memorable experience. And coming in December, mark your calendars for the Everly Winery Holiday Open House, Saturday, December 14th, noon till 4. There will be carolers, appetizers, and Gary's famous free barbecue. Visit Everly Winery today to start planning your holidays. Everly Winery in the heart of Paso Robles Wine Country on Highway 46 East, just three miles from the 101. Find out more at EverlyWinery.com. The 2013 Harvest Festival Original Art and Craft Show is coming soon. From handmade earrings to hand-pressed olive oil, you'll find it at the 2013 Harvest Festival. With over 24,000 handmade American crafts, delicious food, and live entertainment, it's fun for the whole family. The original and the best. The Harvest Festival Art and Craft Show, Friday through Sunday, November 29th through December 1st at the San Jose Convention Center. And welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore Sunday Fun Day Show, 9.49 now the time. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are rounding out the second hour of our program. And it's uh, time for our weekly Explore California segment heard each week through December at this very time. It's our goal to give you some really great ideas for enjoying yourself or perhaps with the upcoming holidays, some gift ideas that uh, can be used by your friends. And uh, we've teamed up with an organization that pulls together a huge, and I do mean huge, range of activities, uh, giving you 15% off the purchases should you decide you want to explore some of their fun options. It's super simple. You just put in the promo code E. D-E, which of course stands for Eat, Drink, Explore. The website is experiencedays.com. That's the letter X, experiencedays.com. And joining us on the uh, Eat, Drink, Explore live line right now is Michelle Geib, who joins us each week at this time. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Randall. How are you? Good. Terrific to have you here. Hey, any idea how many experiences are currently listed on the website? Like, total. 
We have almost 1,800 across the country. Wow. So if somebody listening right now in California here in our listening range uh, has family in Texas, New York, Florida, wherever, uh, they could hop on right now, buy a gift for them in their home state, and they'd still get the 15% discount by using EDE as their promo code. Exactly. That's terrific. Well, we will keep it focused here in California for now. And uh, today's theme is food tours. We did some food tours last week, uh, hopping to what? San Luis Obispo, Carmel, Santa Cruz, and West Marin. Uh, Today... We head to San Francisco's Mission District, one of my favorite places in the city to explore great food. Uh, All of today's have somewhat of a uh, cultural theme to them. They do, Um, and this is a great one. Um, Like you said, you do meet in the Mission District, and it's going to be a highlight of uh, the different cuisine that you can find in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'll stop at a New York Times acclaimed cheese bar, you're going to discover some Argentinian-style empanadas, mm. uh, a fresh organic fruit tasting. Um, you get to stroll through this um, historic Latin neighborhood and visit um, markets, see beautiful murals, and it wouldn't be complete without a delicious dessert stop at the end. <laughs> and none of these tours are without that. Exactly. You know, the Mission District is such a fascinating place in San Francisco. It has historically been the Latin Quarter. Uh, But in recent years, just the last few years or so, it's really become a foodie hotspot. So I'm and beyond the traditional taquerias and stuff that you might normally see there. And I see that now with the uh, cheese tasting and the organic fruits and that sort of thing. So uh, if you've been to the if you haven't been to the Mission District in a while, now's the time to take a food tour there. All right, let's hop Hop across town, not that far, to uh, Japantown, where I imagine at least one of the things you're tasting must be sushi. It is. This is pretty much a a really um, enjoyable Asian street food tour of Japantown. You're going to try a lot of different Japanese, Thai, and Korean specialties. Um, You do some, uh, taste some Indian street beverages, Korean sushi, assorted teas. You also get to learn a little bit about Asian spices. So uh, it's educational as well as tasty on this tour. I love when spices are highlighted because you can use them. You can cross boundaries, you know, uh, ethnic boundaries with spices just about any time. And it's fun to work them into some some of your own favorites in your kitchen. Uh, The picture that you have on the website for this tour is a banh mi sandwich, which is, uh, I believe, Vietnamese. And... uh, I hope those are on the tour because they are. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> those are so mouthwatering good. They're unbelievable. Mm, I love banh mi. Okay, so one place that definitely knows its Latin heritage is Los Angeles. Let's head to the southern half of the state and talk about the Los Angeles Latin Spice Tour. This is a great five star review tour. Um, you get to visit LA's first tortilla factory, um, a nationally acclaimed. To- Mali restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, You also will visit a Latin cafe. You kind of get a a mix of the heart of um, L.A. and its Latin heritage. Uh, And you get to not only travel by foot, but you're going to go on the Metro Gold Line as well, so you can cover the best that this tour has to offer. That's terrific. The Metro Gold Line has expanded recently into East L.A., so that uh, makes sense. And the uh, very first tortilla factory, I've never been to a tortilla factory. I'd love to go to that portion of it. That that would really yeah. be a lot of fun, I think. And, um, boy, L.A. just has has uh, Latin cuisine from your tiny, tiny uh, street taco truck that pulls up, you know, to five-star dining. And speaking of five stars, you said this is a five-star tour. All the tours on there can be voted or rated by your users, right? Correct. So, we take in all their feedback after they enjoy the tours. Oh, that's terrific. And you you check out all these things ahead of time before they're even listed on your site. And then, we uh, do. And then beyond that, the uh, users rate them as well. So uh, our last stop, at least for today, on these food tours is Pasadena. And uh, Pasadena's old town, old Pasadena, is so charming. Uh, why not stroll through there and snack while you're at it? <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is um, this is one of our original food tours that we've offered. Um, it's offered Saturdays and Sundays year round, and you get to sample a bunch of different um, cuisines, including Middle Eastern, Asian, um, an authentic Italian gelato shop, a tea bar, uh, oils, vinegars, and even some delicious. Uh, chocolates are on on the menu for this tour. Pasadena is well known for its farmers markets and fresh produce and uh, once again the picture that you show on the site for this uh, tour shows what looks like a giant produce section so I imagine that's a part of the tour as well. Well uh, Michelle it is worth repeating uh, because I know I asked you about this a week or two ago but if someone were to buy the buy one of these tours for themselves or as a gift. Uh, there is no expiration date, right? That's correct. So they just, and it, if the price of the tour goes up over time, then you just have to pay the difference. That's how it works. Exactly. And that's only after 12 months. So you have a full year to enjoy the experience. And then after that, you still have that original value. Um, but if the, the price goes up a little bit, we do ask for that difference. Right. Now, what happens if you buy one of these and then uh, let's say you get it for a friend of yours who lives in San Diego and you choose something down there and uh, they're just really not at all into what it was that you purchased. Is there some sort of refund or uh, yep, you get a credit? We can always ex- exchange that and put it towards any of the activities offered on our site. Fantastic. Michelle Guy with Experience Days. Again, that's the letter X experiencedays.com promo code is EDE you get 15% off everything we mentioned today or anything else of the what 1800 uh, offerings they have on their site Michelle thank you so much and we'll chat with you again next week have a great Thanksgiving you too all right everyone great to have you with us as always I am your host Randall White saying get out there enjoy your state and bon appetit You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program.